Look at the beautiful light on my beautiful face. What's up, it's Jeff from Vandalistica Vlogs. Today we are at St. Philip's Anglican Church in South Rochdale. I think that's all the words. And we've come to a barbecue and watch people fall over and skin their knees on the concrete playing tennis. Evening. Should be good. Right, first of all, just welcome to everybody from Fishers of Men. Yeah, and we listen, thanks very much for organising and sort of uh, bringing such a great intention over. Uh, we, look, I, I don't think we'll sort of talk much now about sort of organisation for later on the night. We'll just go straight to Grace and then I'll give you some details about you know, where to line up and that there to um, get the maximum advantage from the food there. So some people from our church may not have met Bobby yet who's the organiser of Fish and Friends, so well, we again welcome once again there. And, um, yeah. Thanks, mate, give us some man. And fellas from the uh, Fishers of Men there, right, George Stewart is our, our pastor here at uh, St Phil's. And, um, <laughs> Hey man. Do you feel like praying for us? Do you mind? Mm -hmm. Father God, I just pray, Father God, that everything God is going to glorify your name. It's not about me, Father God. I think I was very foolish, Father God, but Father God, through the, your wisdom, Father God, you made me to the man that I am right now. That I'm actually a child of God, born in the most high, born in the incorruptible seed of the word of God. I thank you, Father God, that you can use useless people like me for your kingdom. As I share my testimony, as the word of God says, my, my testimony is the one that's what you've done in my life. Not to glorify myself, but to glorify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I have 15 minutes to tell my testimony about fish as a man. My story is not very entertaining. It's just telling you how stupid I am. My name is Bobby. Brought and raised in a place called Hong Kong. At the age of one, my mother got married very early. At the age of one, my dad took off and went back to Scotland. Just to let you know, I am Scottish, I'm Portuguese, and I'm Indian. If you want to see my white son, I'll show it to you after. Anyway, my dad took off and my mom, you know, she was in Hong Kong. If you don't work, you don't eat. And I was very spoiled. At the age of nine, I'll start this story, at the age of nine, my mother met another man. And sad to say, I was a Catholic. And the eyes of the Catholics, I'm not knocking the Catholic, that's what the Word of God says, that she committed adultery. And she, the church wasn't going to allow her to marry in the church. So they said, if you marry, you'll be banned from this church and you'll be committing a mortal sin. Okay, you'll never make it to heaven. Anyway, being young, waiting for my, my dad for nine years, never showed up, never came back. She got married, and they said to her, you're a harlot and your son is a, a B word. So I hated my stepfather with a vengeance that I tried to kill him. At the age of nine, I accidentally forged my headmistress' signature. Accidentally, <laughs> and I was expelled. And she said to me, Bobby, you'll come to nothing in this world. And I said to her, I will need an education, but I will make more money than you will in your lifespan. And guess what? At the age of 10, I started to hang around with some nice people. At the age of 11, I joined the triads, which is the Chinese mafia in Hong Kong. They taught me how to rob, they taught me how to steal, they taught me how to shoplift, they taught me how to fight, they taught me how to break into houses. At the age of 13, they said, Bobby, do you want to make more money? I said, sure, I love money. Because at that stage, I already had a lot of nice things. So they said, Bobby, why don't you be a drug dealer? I said, what do I need to do? He says, sell drugs. I said, what drugs? Heroin. I said, what? I've never done that before. They said, you're going to be good at it because you can speak the language, and you can speak English, you can speak Cantonese, and you're going to be speaking to people that needs the drugs, which was people from the army, okay? 
So anyway, I became a very, very good drug dealer that I made a, a tune about myself. Do you want to hear it? I'm yes. your father, I'm your brother, I'm your doctor when you need. Have some coke, have some weed, you don't need. I'm your friend, your main boy. Is that good? <laughs> you want me to say it again? <laughs> I became so good that I thought to myself, why is everybody taking this white powder? What's so good about it? So I decided to chase the dragon. That's what they used to do, chase the dragon. So I thought, I'll chase the dragon too. So I went to a place called the Wall City. That's where all the crims are. It's a place, that even the cops don't dare to go in, but we own that place. We sold women to prostitution, we money laundering, so a lot of things the tribes was doing. But I got into heroin. And so I'd say, I loved it. Okay? They helped me with uh, my problems. They helped me to be stronger and more stupid. I would say more daring. I used to swallow a lot of drugs going in and out of Thailand. And I would that, that, that out. And then I would sell it. So I was making a lot of money. But so i say at the age of 17, I made a lot of money that I did something stupid. And I got busted for it. And I was charged with trafficking and manslaughter. So I was remanded for 14 months in maximum security. That was my first charge. Okay, I went in there scared because I was, you know, trying to be tough. But when you go to maximum security, where you see murderers, murderers, and murderers, and murderers, and I've seen what they've done. They still scare the crap out of me. Anyway, but I think somebody the tribes that backed me up because they knew that i was useful because i made a lot of money for them selling to the american consulate selling to the british consulate <laughs> selling to <laughs> army officials selling to a lot of people that wanted this drug called heroin so they protected me for 14 months but i vowed if i ever get out of there i'm going to destroy a lot of lives because I started to learn to hate. That I had no problems of stabbing somebody or slitting somebody's throat. Because I became angry with myself and everybody that dumped me in because, hey, I thought I was a wonder boy, but they dumped me in. And I was very angry. So I went out there with vengeance. And the saddest part, I got more and more addicted to drugs, heroin. So it became in, and out, in, and out, in, and out of Buckingham Palace. <laughs> White House. All these nice places where people treat you with dignity, with respect. Dream on. Anyway, I tried to commit suicide thinking, well, enough is enough. I hate this world. Nobody loves me. Nobody treats me. Nobody treats me with any dignity. Nobody treats me with any respect. I paid for my love. I had the Rolex, I had the this. Anyway, my stepfather said, we'll try to get you married. Maybe if you get married, everything is going to be all right. So I said, okay, I'll get married. Guess what? It didn't work. I had a $1.2 million house. I had the Rolex and everything. But half the time I was on the streets. But half the time I was in prison. Half the time was some rehab, so it wasn't really a marriage. My life was one big mess. Anyway, I tried to commit suicide again, but I went to one of the tallest buildings in Hong Kong, and I looked down. It was just a little bit too high for me to jump. <laughs> <laughs> I put a gun to my head. I wanted to blow my own brains off, but I was I was a wuss. Can I tell you that I'm a wuss? I didn't dare to pull the trigger. So the best thing to do is what you call to have a hot shot. Do you know what a hot shot is? Yeah, putting a lot of dope in your little spoon, cutting it out, putting it in the syringe and whacking it. I went to a toilet, okay, locked myself in and says, the end. And I start to pick up my arm, the syringe up my arm. Somehow or another, some Christians got into the bathroom, revived me. I said to me, Jesus loves you. I say, stick 
it up somewhere. <laughs> okay? I says, why don't you just let me die? You know what they says? God has a plan to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. And these were some people that you might have heard of. She's a lady called Jackie Pullinger. She wrote the book, Chasing the Dragon. Some people might know who she is, and some people might know, not, not know who she is. But she's a very famous lady, yeah. a dumb blonde, <laughs> that went to the mall city to tell people about Jesus. And guess what? She made an impact. But she didn't make an impact with me at that moment. <laughs> but they persevered. They came back five years, came to visit me in prison, came to visit me here, came to visit me here. It got to be a point that says, I don't believe in this Jesus, dun, dun, dun. but I need to come into your program because I had gangrene. I was shooting up so much that they were going to amputate my legs. I had no veins whatsoever. So I thought to myself, I was losing so much weight that even, even though I wanted to die, I think I was already dying. <clears throat> anyway, I went, uh, the day I went into the program, I don't know how much time I have. I hope I'm not uh, wasting your time. Uh, so I, the, the day that I went into the program, I had 14 shots of pure white heroin. Okay, pure white. It's called 999, pure. So I was off my face for three days. So the fourth day I got up, I wanted to leave. Bye bye, because I was going through so one of the leaders came to me and said, Bobby, you made a pact with us that you stay for 14 days and we can't allow you to leave. I ran and grabbed the knife and wanted to stab him. They took the knife off me, pushed me to the bed and started praying and crying. What a bunch of us. <laughs> Be a man! Stab somebody! Be a man like me. Fight. Fight, hurt, hurt, hate, hate. Be a man. But I looked at him and I said, man, you guys are a bunch of wuss, man. Bunch of wuss. But there was one person that I knew. He was a rival tribe society to try to kill me in prison, to try to stab me in, 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 out in the streets. And I looked at him and I said, what's wrong with you? Have you turned gay? And he stared at me and he said, no, I found love in Jesus Christ. I told him where to go. But I had fear because I thought he's going to kill me in there. Because now that I'm so weak, you know, I didn't have strength to even fight him anymore. So anyway, I lived in fear. But all he did when I was going through withdrawals, when I dirtied myself, wet myself, he would undress me and take me to the showers or to the bath and wash me. And I think to myself, what an idiot. I would do that. But I felt something in my spirit that I've never felt before. Why would people treat us with kindness, treat us with respect, and treat us with love? I paid for love. I've never understood love because I've never been loved. But this guy loved me. <laughs> this guy that hated me so much started to love me. And so did all the other people. And I didn't understand. So anyway, my life was going. I was dying. I'm not talking about spiritually. I was dying. So I think they got the pastor was about to say the last flight because I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't do nothing. I was just passing out, passing out, passing out, and I was just losing so much weight. If you know my weight, it was 85 pounds. What is that? Anybody know? 85 pounds? 38 kilos. 38 kilos? Yeah, I had a beautiful waist. <laughs> I have a six pack. So I was losing, I was dying. Okay? They said that. It's the end for it. 
but somehow they believe in the power of prayers and they prayed but I believe I was gonna die anyway somehow half a crust of bread was brought in that morning and half a glass of orange juice was brought in and I looked up to the flipping heavens and said if there's a God let me eat this and drink this and maybe we can come to some terms anyway I drank that juice and I ate that half a crust of bread and guess what it stayed down I didn't spew up everything Ooh, what's happening so the next day I says God let's play this game over again now there's one cup of orange juice one piece of bread I says God let me eat this and drink this and maybe something will happen between me and you. I ate it and I drank it and it stayed down. By the 10th, 11th, 12th day, I was starting to eat again. Things are starting to happen again. What? And I praise God, you must be joking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the 13th day, I thought to myself, one more day, and I'm heading home. The 14th day came, I felt the spirit of the enemy coming to me and speaking to me and said, Bobby, why do you hang around with people that's going to use you, abuse you, you only have your money. Bobby, you need it out there. You need it out there. They're missing you out there. You've been such a good drug dealer for them. You've been such a good person to these people. They need you out there. God came into my mind. I'm going back to my vomit. I'm going back to Egypt because they need me there. Suddenly, something dropped in my spirit. Another voice that says, Bobby, did I give you back your life? I'm sorry to say. I broke down and I cried. I've been stabbed, I've been stabbed, I've been beaten up, I've been stabbed, I've been beaten up. But I've learned never to cry. And when I was touched by the power of God, I cried like a baby for over 20 minutes. I thought to myself, what is happening to me? I don't know what was happening. Have I turned worse? Because I didn't know what was happening, but I was willing to suss this Jesus out. I was going to take that little step of faith, only a little step of faith, because I don't trust anybody. Because I've been hurt trusting people, and they've let me down. But I was willing to take that little step of faith, just trusting a God that I've never seen. Guess what? He took me to the path of righteousness. He helped me to redeem my life. I lost everything when I found God. My ex-wife, which I finally told the truth that I hawked the wedding ring, I used her MasterCard and took out $50,000. I told her everything because I used to blame her for everything. And when I told her the truth, she filed for divorce. And she took my $1.3 million. She burned all my clothes, got rid of all my Rolex, all my 24 karat, got rid of everything. And she even wanted my life insurance, which was another $60,000. She left me with this. And I was very angry with God. I said, God, first time in my life, I told the truth and I lost everything. You know what God says? I gave you back your life and I'm gonna bless you if you seek me with all your heart and truly find me. Guess what? I took another step of faith and another step of faith another step of faith. I started to walk with God. And then I met this beautiful woman in Hong Kong. She was a Bible career. She had all the education. She was an A-grade person. And guess what? She fell in love with me. 
Paul Duncan has it. <laughs> Everybody said to her, are you that stupid? He's been a crim all his life. You're a Bible courier. You, your grades are so high, you want to marry this. <laughs> she says, I do not see any of his past. I see a new creation in Christ. Amen. As the word of God says in Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, whoever is in Christ is a new, new creation. creation. All things have passed away, and all things became new. Amen. Guess what? She went back to Australia, and I thought, the yeah. end. Because with my criminal record, there is no way that I was going to go anywhere. People have says, Bobby, your criminal record is not just, just, just. Yours is big, big, big. <laughs> they won't want people like you. But it has been prophesied that I was going into the highways and in the byways and to go to places to share the gospel. My, test, my word is going to be my testimony about the goodness of my God that has redeemed me, saved me, and gave me a second chance. Amen. And through that, I thought to myself, what chances do I stand to come to Australia? Guess what? I arrived here in 1995. It took them 10 years, 10 years to give me citizenship. They sussed me out big time. Guess what? They finally got to like me. <laughs> then I even start to get to work with the coppers. I even won an award. What is that award? Logan something? Yeah. Something I won an award. <laughs> and I was with all the coppers. All these governors. And they looked at me and said, Are you Bobby? Are you the pastor, the minister, or vicious of man? You don't even look like a Christian. <laughs> I asked back, what does a Christian look like? What does a Christian look like? Please, can you tell me what a Christian looks like? Alright. <laughs> and then I read the scripture that says, God uses the foolish to confound the wise. I have no education. Some of these guys here are so smart. They teach me a lot of things. And I thank God that, hey, these are my brothers. That we can work together, encourage each other, help each other to build God's kingdom. I thought to myself, how can God use me? So God says, trust me. And that's what I did, because I've worked for two big churches. So I say, we are not very well liked, because we do cause a lot of ugliness in organizations. So finally God says, why did you open your house to the homeless, to the streeties, to the druggies, to the prostitutes? And everyone came to me and says, are you that stupid, Bobby? You got four beautiful kids. Your daughter's 20 years old. She's pretty as anything. What are they going to do to your house? I said, have you read the scripture that says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord? And guess what? <clears throat> I started Fishers of Men 16 years ago. And guess what? I live by faith and not by sight. What is Fishers of Men? Being a friend to people that really needs a friend. I want, us, I want people to see Jesus in us, though I have many problems, as my brothers will tell you. But I'm learning to deal with my problem, not to say, I'm the senior pastor here, look at me, I'm Sandra D. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asking people to look at me. I'm still dealing with things. Fishers of man is come follow me. Who is the me? Jesus. Jesus. I'm not asking people to follow me. Join my fan club, you can today if you want. Sign up here, please. <laughs> I'm asking people to follow Jesus. Because only Jesus can change their life. Because we have all, everyone here, as you see, my brothers, has been institutionalized. We've all been in the correctional services. 
Have we been corrected? No, I haven't. Well, when I got knowledge and wisdom from God, for the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, I found out wisdom is not a piece of paper. Because God changes the innermost. God hasn't changed this yet. My brother looked at me and said, Wow, you got long hair. <laughs> what are you? Joshua, remember you said that just now? <laughs> he looked at me and said, You weird. I said, I know. <laughs> Please, I don't want to waste your time. My word is my testimony. <clears throat> Not to say how good I am. There's issues I'm still dealing with. But I thank God that I'm taking every step by Amen. faith. Amen. And what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence not seen. But I believe that faith has helped me through 25 years without having to go back to Egypt having drank, having had a smoke, not looking at every woman with, oh, what's your telephone number, baby? <laughs> no. Are you talking about me again? <laughs> <laughs> I thank God that he has sustained me. I thank God that he's given me strength. Thank God that I've finally learned to trust him a little bit more. Because not only did he give me back my life, if I was to tell you my age, I'd probably even freak you out. But guess what? <laughs> what the locust has eaten, God's given me back those years. That I've learned to smile again. I've never smiled in my life. And guess what? I have a smile right now that attracts a lot of people. Amen. I have people that's 85 years old at the car wash and always <laughs> asking me out on a date. <laughs> 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 I thank God for all the things that he's done and if you think hey can God use me yes he can because God uses the foolish God can use anybody God can even use an ass God can use this nobody this, this is completely a nobody I can't even use a phone I can't even use a computer in the eyes of the world I am stupid but in the eyes of God, He is wise. For the word of God says, those who win souls is wise. So Father God, I thank you that you've used me as a testimony for the glory of your name. Amen. I hope I haven't wasted anyone's time. I hope they'll hear something that will glorify your name, knowing that there is a God out there, even though they haven't seen. But they felt your presence. Father God, this is, this is the time that I'm just going to say, God, I thank you, Father God, that you brought me here to share about the goodness of who you are. Because, Father God, I'm nobody now. In the eyes of the world, I'm, Father God, I'm very small. But I'm part of the body of Christ, serving the King of kings and the Lord of God. And I thank God that you can use me for the glory of your name. I thank God that George brought me here, Father God, and he has blessed us blessed us and continuously blessed us Father God with every good and perfect gift so we can bless others Father God you are in the blessing business as the word of God says freely give and freely receive Amen. Father God I give it all Father God everything I have Father God I give it to you but I know you have blessed me abundantly that the blessing sometimes even overtakes me I thank everyone that's here Father God I pray that will be a seed that will be planted in every individual and I pray others will water it. Others will add good soul to it. They will not look at a brother and say, no, he's bloody useless. He will not look at a brother and say, he's a murderer, he's a death. No, he's a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Amen. I am a child of God. Amen. Who are you? Who are you? Are you in Christ? Because if you are in Christ,